John and I both came from the north side of the city of Calgary. Um, he uh, came from a very modest background and um, I think there was a generation of us in the city that just uh, went to school, got lucky, uh, found work early on and uh, we worked hard and we got rewarded for it, including John. Uh, my family had emigrated from uh, Holland after the war. When I was two years old, uh, my dad passed away, which kind of changed the entire course of my life. We were welfare recipients from the, as long as I can remember, and uh, we relied on uh, the kindness of uh, friends. I lived with other families for a while, but I knew when I uh, grew up, I knew, what I, I knew I wanted a lot more for me and my family. My wife Bonnie and I have been close friends of John and Anna Dilworth for over 40 years. We all met each other, oddly enough, at the Conservation Board, which is the regulator in town of the oil and gas industry. This would be in the early 70s. So in the early 70s, both John and Anna were working at the board as high school graduates. Uh, Anna was on the third or fourth floor in the gas department. And John was, if you can believe this, was in the print and mailing department somewhere down in the basement. So humble beginnings for sure uh, for John. So my very first job uh, out of high school, I was making a buck fifty an hour working at the oil and gas conservation board, which introduced me to the petroleum industry. More importantly, it introduced me to my wife. By the time Bonnie and I got there separately, we didn't know each other. Uh, John and Anna had gotten married, I think. Anna was 19 and John was maybe 21. Nearly a month after they were married, John went to school to become an engineer. Uh, so I got my degree in civil engineering with distinction in, in 1977 from the University of Calgary. So I was very lucky. Um, Shell Canada hired me right out of university. Uh, I got an opportunity. It took me about two years of bugging him, but and I think a company car was involved there somewhere too. Uh, but he eventually came over. I needed a, another car because we now had two kids and, and uh, so I joined uh, uh, what is now GLJ Petroleum Consultants back then. It was called Clefford Coles, Nickel Fork, Pinnell and uh, it exposed me to the entire Western Canadian sedimentary basin as a reserves evaluator. Yeah. As John's profile rose in town here as being one of GLJ's key guys, uh, he caught the attention of, of the brass at uh, Arc Financial and uh, uh, to make a long story short, they eventually made him an offer that he couldn't uh, refuse and, and probably I couldn't match. The, the leaders that I brought in on day one, uh, I taught them what Mac and John and Phil taught me and that was I'll do well if we do well. John was a great believer from the day one that he wanted to have a company where every, every employee would be a leader. And it would be a culture of leaders developing leaders. That's part of the uniqueness of Arc Resources. We wanted to create a culture where, where the employees uh, had the opportunity to develop themselves with the with where they felt fulfilled and where, they could, where there was challenge and where they could really flourish. And we told people that, we articulated it. This ARC is a model I've sat on numerous boards and uh, I always hold up ARC as the gold standard. And again, I think that's attributable to the leadership and uh, the culture that John helped develop. If you treat people properly, with dignity and respect, and you care about them as human beings, not as worker bees, great things will happen. I believe if you're a, a business, you're part of the community in which you operate. And if you're not contributing as an individual and as a company, why are you there? So uh, we got very deliberate about giving within the organization. Um, we made it very clear that uh, volunteer time at the food bank, at United Way, wherever. But like, you know, basically he would do anything for United Way, even dressed up in drag. And he's already six foot five or whatever he is, and then he put those big heels on him. It was, 
he was grotesque. <laughs> he would do anything to, you know, raise money for United Way to help, because he knew it, the causes it was going to, so he had a... From my point of view, the most significant thing in philanthropy that we did together was uh, the creation of the Canadian Centre for Advanced Leadership uh, at the Haskins School of Business. I mean, that's Almost always, our resources would consider themselves included in any of the initiatives that we undertook and vice versa. So we became quite involved um, with the Tom Baker Cancer Center. Uh, we became the lead uh, uh, sponsor of the Tom Baker Cancer Center golf tournament. When John first became part of the CAC, it was really a result of my husband reaching out to him. Tom has known John for a long time, and uh, the two of them spoke about the importance of the center. Uh, John and I had a meeting, and John says, we're just going to start this thing. And we hadn't raised very much money, but John says, I'm going to put some in, and you're going to put some in, and, and uh, that'll get the ball rolling, and we know we're going to raise the money. We literally went back to our committee and said, uh, you know, John's going to backstop this, and I'll, and I'll be there beside him, and we're just going to start building this. And everybody looked at us like, we haven't raised the money, and says, don't worry, we're going to raise the money. And uh, we did. Within probably a year, less than a year, there was a million raised, then another seven million raised. So. And really was instrumental in leading our fund development for, the, for the, getting that whole center up and running. Building it out was a dream that without John's involvement could not have happened. And when I looked at the leaders one day, and it was like 40% of our staff were leaders, we were relatively small there. Probably among the, one of the lowest paid people in the company was a leader of the United Way. And I went to her and I said, can you afford to do this? Uh, and she said, it's important that I do this. And uh, she, she believed that this was something important. And that's when you know what you're trying to sell at the top has found its way all the way through the organization. Everybody that knows John agrees that, you know, John's a family man. His, his family comes first. And, you know, there's so many different examples of uh, where John and Anna have, uh, you know, gone out of the way to help, you know, not only the, their kids, but the extended family and, and that sort of thing as well. So when my kids got involved in anything, I was all in. If they needed fundraising, I'd be there. If they needed uh, coaching, I'd help out. Uh, if they needed whatever that they needed. So I got very involved in anything my kids were involved with. A lot of time together, I mean, we've, we've traveled extensively with, with John and Anna, and we've spent time with our families at the lake. Um, you know, we had uh, hockey tickets. We uh, shared many, many games uh, with the Calgary Flames over the years, and the kids came and, and that type of thing. Uh, our two families were neighbors at Springbank, and we were neighbors at Windermere Lake. And so our families were very, very close. Our kids are basically siblings and still are day. As, as young, successful adults, and uh, that has been a lot of fun. Um, over the years, um, uh, we've been on the Caribbean cruises when we all turned 50-ish. Uh, we've been on the scuba dive trips into the Caribbean. Uh, we've gone to the Mediterranean on a cruise uh, that um, when we all turned 60. We had the pleasure of touring a little bit of Italy with John and Anna. My husband's Italian, so we wanted to show the Italy Italian style. And uh, if you know John at all, you know that he loves his Dr. Pepper. I want you to know, and I would love for this to go on camera, I moved mountains to get Dr. Pepper in Italy everywhere we went. However, I did it for the man because I really do respect, admire, and adore him. John, this is Phil Harkins. And you, you deserve this award as much as anybody could, and you've done so much for the community for the company that you served in for so long and getting this recognition this lifetime award is uh, so deserving of who you are congratulations congratulations john on this well-deserved recognition of both your leadership skills and your passion and commitment to the western canadian oil and gas industry and the communities that we operate in hey john uh i'm really proud of you i never thought you would get to where you are today when we were in high school playing pool but uh, you're an outstanding friend, a great father, uh, just a great community person, and the honesty and integrity that you have is incredible. 
Love you and uh, all the best. You deserve this. John, congratulations on receiving this recognition. You're, you're incredibly deserving of this. And in fact, who you are and what your contribution was has been so uh, enormous and, uh, uh, and incredible. And you've impacted so many lives in, in such a uh, positive way. Congratulations. Well, first and foremost, uh, my wife Anna, who this year is our 45th year together as, as a married couple, um, she raised our kids while I was traveling the world consulting, while I was traveling around North America trying to uh, meet with investors, uh, to my four fabulous children, Brady, Jared, Lane, Sam, who have all become incredible people in their own right, great citizens of the community, uh, caring, wonderful people. This is who uh, we did it all for. And uh, if I didn't have that, none of this else would, would matter. Uh, Mac Van Willingen, John Stewart, Phil Swift, and all the people at Art Financial, they really gave me an opportunity. Uh, Daryl Gilbert, uh, you're the one that uh, got me into the consulting business that I never would have taken that, got that opportunity at Art Financial. And the people that believed in who we are were uh, certainly, uh, Susan Healy, uh, Steve Sinclair, Doug Bonner, Myron Stadnett, the first four people that became the nucleus, nucleus of uh, ARC Resources, uh, if not for all those people and all the other people in ARC Resources, and on behalf of everybody else that's helped me along the way. Happy to accept it.